Timer data types. The timer data type, T4 colon 0, is one element or one instance of the timer data type. And remember, it's made up of three words, the control bits, the preset value, and the accumulate. So in this particular lab, it's not a practical application. It is simply set up to demonstrate to you how the timer data type executes when the rung is true. I had you put in a preset of zero for a particular reason. So while watching the cube fill and the controls bit, switch input zero to the on state. I'm going to flip it on. And then in the manual it said, did the accumulate increase above zero? Well, the answer is no. Why? Because there was no preset. So the instant that you enabled the timer data type, it saw that the accumulate was equal to the preset. Zero equals zero, right? Therefore, it was done. Whether or not it actually timed for one scan, I don't know. You'd never see it. So again, the answer is the preset equaled the accumulate at the enable. Then I had you change the time base to a hundredth of a second. To do that, you had to put it in the edit mode and put in a preset of 300, which in hundredths of a second would be three seconds. Okay, you switch the input back off because that resets the timer. Notice all the bits are off now. And then I had you turn on the input zero. When output two energizes, flip the selector switch or the toggle switch back to the out position. When output two energizes, output two is the done bit. So it accumulates to three seconds. It's done. Back off. When does rung zero become logically true? When input zero is on. Which bits react immediately when the rung goes true? The enable and timer timing. From the instant that the enable and timer timing bits are set, how long before something else happens? You could say three seconds or you can say three hundred hundredths of a second. What can you say about the timer timing bit and the done bit of a timer data type when instructed by the TON instruction? Now there's only one type of timer data types. And all of the timer instructions, TON, TOF, and RTO all use that same data. Specifically the timer timing and done bits. When you're instructing a timer data type with a TON, the timer timing bit is on from the time it's enabled until the done bit comes on. The done bit comes on when the timer timing bit goes off. So the done bit comes on the instant that the accum equals the preset. So I'll turn it back on, you watch it accumulate, and the instant that the accumulate equals the preset, it's done. It's no longer timing, but it is still enabled as long as rung zero is true and it sets like that forever until you either reset it, which is not something we're going to do specifically in this lab or in this logic, or you turn off input zero that clears the entire data type. So the true execution of the TON instruction enables the timer data type. It starts counting units of time. The, it turns on the timer timing bit during this time and when the accumulate equals the preset, then it turns off the timer timing bit and the done bit comes on. That's the true execution. The false execution is when the run goes false, it clears the accumulate value and all of the control bits go back to zero. We're going to execute this again. And in the manual, you had to fill in some blanks next to some actions based on the timer. And I ask you to put down the order in which they occurred. The run goes true, and then the timer timing bit is set, and the enable bit is set. It just depends on how you want to call the shots, but run goes true, enable bit is set, timer timing bit is set. The accumulate increments, and when the accumulate equals the preset, the done bit is set, and the timing, timer timing bit is clear. When the run goes false, all three of those occur number two. Enable bit is clear, done bit is clear, and the accumulate is clear. So I had in my list, run zero goes true was given as a one. 
I have the enable bit set as one. When the run goes true, it sets the enable bit. And then timer timing bit is set, and I label that two or three. Then the accumulate increments, three. Four, the accumulate equals the preset. Five, the done bit is set. Five or six, the timer timing bit is cleared. It's hard to say how many of those things occur simultaneously and how many that there's actually a scan in between that you can't see. But the only thing that is really critical is that you understand the sequence of the three control bits based on the relationship of the preset and accumulate. So when I turn this on, the enable and the timer timing bits are going to go on right away. Watch the logic. If I let the run goes false, it completely resets. So it doesn't have to time out to be reset. If you watch, the enable and timer timing bit are on at the same time. And when it's done timing, the enable stays on and now the done bit's on. It's that simple. You're going to see hundreds of these timer data types used in your career working on PLCs and PACs. And by the way, there are no count down timers. You only see the preset and the cumulate. You see the cumulate accumulate units of time. In this case, it's hundreds of a second. Counting up, it, it's not a countdown timer or a time down, like you set something at three and you watch it go 300, 299, 298, 297. Now there are other controllers out there and their firmware shows you it counting down or rather it starts out with the accumulate being 300 and then it reduces or counts down until it's zero, then the timer's done. Okay, I've gone offline with a previous project that we're going to add timers to. And remember, this is where we left it. We had instituted the one-shot instruction to protect us from happy fingers in one particular situation. Now we're going to add a timer data type into this logic to demonstrate something else. Okay, uh, right after this little two-page lab for the TON instruction, on delay timer, we have a pract practical example using the TON instruction, and I'm going to drag that over here into view. With the one-shot instruction in the previous practical example, we were able to uh, reduce the possibility of happy fingers causing a size fault when there actually was not a size fault. Now we're going to use a timer to eliminate some of that time period where there could be an erroneous trip either uh, by bobbling cartons or by happy fingers or jokesters passing the conveyor. So let's add the logic. I added the logic and I want you to notice I pointed this out in the manual, but I want to point it out again to you. True if on 1PE used to be just to the right of that one shot instruction. Now there's a timer done bit there. And right above it in another rung is 1PE is enabling a timer that has a preset of three seconds. The bottom line is that that photo eye has to be on continuously for three seconds in order for that done bit to come up. And that's all there is to it. There's nothing complicated here. We are not just delaying 1PE being in the original position of the logic for the size fault. We are saying it has to be there for, for a full three seconds without any interruption. Because remember, if 1PE, it, the optical path is blocked and you start the timer, but then it's unblocked before three seconds is up, it'll never be done. So this will never be done unless 1PE is blocked continuously for three seconds, which means if somebody walks by and flags the photo eye, then it's going to start the timer over again. We're using this conveyor example to show you how to integrate a timer on delay instruction into logic that you already understand. This is the kind of situation that you run into out on the shop floor or wherever you work using PLCs. You have something that works, but there's problems. And so your boss says, can you do something to improve it so if somebody walks by and does this, we don't have this problem. Another thing to consider is that if the done bit is not on, 
that means that the timer has not timed out, which could also mean that it's not enabled. The done bit, true fun, done bit there in rung two, that only tells you that the timer's not done. That doesn't tell you whether it's timing or not. My point is that you're sitting here looking at the logic, so you can see if it's timing and just not done, or it's not even timing, and therefore it's not done. So not done doesn't mean that it is in the process of timing. Eventually it will be done. It may not even be timing because the photo eye is not even blocked. Another important thing to consider is this. If the optical path of one PE is not blocked, in other words, there's nothing in front of the photo eye, then that done bit's going to be off. Just the same as the Truifon I colon 0.0 slash 2 for 1PE. If 1PE is off, that done bit's going to be off, period. Because if 1PE is off, then that timer instruction, the false execution of the TON addressing T4 colon 1, is resetting the whole timer data type. So one thing you can go to the bank with, if 1PE is off, so is the timer done bit. The only time that the timer done bit is going to be on as if 1PE has been blocked continuously for at least three seconds. Let's download this and go online with it. I also, besides going online, geezered it down one notch just so we could get that bottom rung completely in view. There was enough of it there to see, but this is better. So let's operate this thing. Well, we have no size fault. There's nothing to reset. But I do need to turn the stop button on, input zero, Remember that our uh, universal digital field device simulator has, for each input, it has a toggle switch. So I can flip it on and it's maintained on. And then the push bit right next to it acts as a normally closed. So technically we have a normally closed contact connected up to the input. And we do that by using the maintained on position of that toggle switch in series with the normally closed contact of that push button. Okay, now we're all set up to run. So we hit the start button and the conveyor is running. Now just because the conveyor is running doesn't mean there are any cartons on it. So let's bring in a carton in block 1PE, which is input 2. And let's say it clears before it hits 2. And then it passes through 2 and on the way it goes. So notice that T4 done never comes on unless that photo eye is blocked for more than three seconds. Yes, some real uh, scheming uh, nutcase could walk up there, watch for a while, and then stick his hand, his or her hand, in front of the photo eye while it's being blocked by the carton, so it continues to block it after the carton leaves. But typically, the Yahoo's don't uh, put that much thought into what they're doing. They'll just walk up and flash the photo eye when no one's looking to see what is going to happen. Now let's turn on 1PE and if we let it time out, okay, now you can say that 1PE has been on for three seconds. Now I realize that the conveyor is running right now and eventually the carton's got to get to 2PE, but uh, this is my conveyor, my carton, so I can make it as slow or as long as possible. So right now, looking at this logic, you see that 1PE is on, but you already know that if T4 colon 1 slash done, if the done bit is on, that not only is that photo eye on or blocked, the optical path is interrupted, but it's been on for three seconds. Now if you hit 2PE, then you get a size fault. You're going to clear 1PE eventually, and then 2PE, and of course 2PE is not going to clear until start the motor up again. So right now we have a size fault. So if we push stop, okay, that resets the size fault, but 2PE is still blocked. So if I turn on start my conveyor, the conveyor starts moving and eventually 2PE clears. Now if somebody were to walk up Let's back up the carton. It's still in 2P. If somebody comes up and flashes uh, 1PE with their fingers, it's not going to make any difference unless it goes the full three seconds. Okay, so 2PE clear. So you can see, although this is not perfect, it is an improvement on just using the one shot. 
You could actually take out the one shot and this would still have some function for you. That wasn't in the lab, but let's do that just for grins. So I'm going to put this in the edit mode. I'm going to cut that out so I can easily paste it back in if I want to. Test it. So the conveyor's running. We're going to block one PE, but if one PE clears before two PE hits, you see, not a problem. Now where we lose it is, let's say the 2PE is already blocked, erroneously, and then we block 1PE. As long as we clear it, we clear 1PE before the timer times out. So basically, we've, if we take out the one shot, then we've eliminated the need for 2PE. I prefer to keep 2PE. I'd rather have 2PE in there with a one shot and then keep the timer. Because think about what you're doing. Uh, technically, we could take out 2PE. So I'm going to double click here. And I'm going to say Control V to put that one shot back in. It should have been there. Now I'm going to select both of them. Cut. Okay, now we don't, we're not even using 2PE. What we're doing instead is using a time delay. And this is a combination of event driven and time driven logic, which is not very dependable. But let, let me show you how it works. So the conveyor's on and one PE gets blocked, but as long as it's short enough, that never times out. As long as the photo eye is cleared before the timer times out, then we're not going to get a fault. But let's say somebody changes the preset on the timer. For some reason, somebody drops the preset. What didn't cause a fault before now causes a fault because somebody changed the preset. If we still had our logic in there, that would not have happened because this would still have to be true before this was true. In other words, the timer would have to time out. And remember, this can't be done unless that's blocked, right? So with the one shot, this would still have to be true before this was true in order to get a size fault and use it for something else. Now we're back to our original logic. Conveyor is stopped, and we pull off the erroneous carton, and we clear the fault, and we're ready to start the conveyor again.